there was a trend over the last couple of decades towards reality television series portraying men in dangerous jobs who risk their lives each day at work. Axe Men was one of these reality series. It featured several logging companies who fell trees in the forests of northwestern Oregon, Montana, and Washington State, as well as collecting timber from the rivers of Florida and Louisiana. The series provided a peek into the world of these hardy fellas. Most of the current crew members were born with logging in their blood and are the third or fourth generation of a family of loggers. The series, Axe Men, premiered on History Channel on 9th March 2008, but sadly it was ill-fated, and here we'll uncover the tragedies, legal issues, and reasons why it was cut. Tom Beers, American producer and writer known for Deadliest Catch, the popular 2005 series featuring the perilous lives of Alaskan crab fishermen, was the executive producer and narrator for Axe Men in 150 episodes from 2008 to 2016. It spotlighted teams from several logging companies working together and competing against each other to see whose harvest produced the highest yield. Not only did they operate through inclement weather and harsh conditions, but also faced daily stressors and challenges that come with the job, such as accidents, injuries, and mechanical breakdowns. What made the show even more entertaining was the banter clashes between individual personalities of strong characters, who each have their own methods and solutions to such problems, the scandals and legal issues, controversies, and of course, the competitive nature of the show. Axe Men started with four companies of logging crews, and approximately 25 others joined over the 160 episodes which aired in several countries around the globe. In 2015, the series won the Golden Reel Award for Best Sound Editing, but fate played its hand, and crew members were confronted with some fatal losses. Jimmy Smith, an Army veteran and the founder of S&S Aqua Logging, based in Aberdeen, Washington State, had the bright idea of salvaging perfectly preserved logs that had sunk to, or got stuck in riverbeds. He started the business with his son James. Jimmy appeared in Axe Men from the second season in 2009 until the sixth season. His motto was, recovering the forest of yesterday to save the forest of tomorrow. Jimmy fought a lengthy battle against cancer. His son James took over when Jimmy's illness weakened him and rendered him incapable of working, and became the new captain of their boat Logzilla. Jimmy passed away on 1st November 2012 at the age of 56, leaving behind his two sons. The seventh season's premiere episode, All or Nothing, was dedicated to his memory. William Bart Colatuono was with the R&R &R Connor Aviation Helilogging Crew, airlifting logs by helicopter from regions that were impossible to reach by road. Bart had 25 years of utility and military helicopter experience behind him, and so was a seasoned pilot. He appeared in the second and third season of Axe Men. He was also the author of the book, Helilogging in a Sucker Hole, which is described as a fast-paced read featuring the trials and tribulations of helilogging and keeping the business afloat, or in this case, airborne. History Channel described Bart's role as a smart pilot who isn't afraid to take risks, and views helicopter logging as a competitive sport. He competes against himself, against the machine, and against the weather. On 17 November 2013, whilst airlifting logs in the Oregon forest, it would seem that Bart was aware that there was a problem with the helicopter, because he released the logs sending them crashing down. After in-depth investigations, it is believed that the rotor had broken causing him to lose control, and he was tragically killed when the chopper plummeted to the ground and crashed upside down. Bart was 54 years old and left behind four children and his fiancée. The episode, Axes and Allies, in the seventh season, was a dedication to his memory. Bart's demise is the only death publicized as directly related to logging operations. On the 16th September 2016, owner of Regard Logging, Gabe Regard, was tragically killed in a motor vehicle accident in Port Angeles, Washington State. It was reported that he wasn't wearing his seatbelt. This was a huge shock for his colleagues and all their fans, as Gabe was probably the most well-known face in the show, being present from the beginning, having just taken over the business from his father, Craig. On 23rd June 2016, 
the Rygaard family had called for support on his Facebook page as Gade was in the running for the position of Clallam County Commissioner, whereby he would manage trust lands that had been mismanaged and create more jobs. Sadly, Gabe didn't get the opportunity to achieve his dream. Stacy Robeson was a yarder operator and worked for Pill Logging, operating machinery that hauled the logs from the stump to the collection point. It was a shock when he died at the age of 38 on the 15th, December 2018, leaving behind his wife, Angela, and three children. Although it was initially assumed that his death was the result of a logging accident, the cause was never made public. The final premise was that he died of a heart attack. Dwayne Deathlefs had worked for years in the logging industry in Washington State, Oregon, and Alaska, and came out of retirement in July 2019 to help pill logging. He featured in six episodes during the tenth season. Dwayne, who operated a chainsaw, made some funny and interesting comments during the show, but he was also almost clipped by a falling tree, which the loggers refer to as being in a barber chair. Dwayne died at home on 6 December 2019, aged 60, cause of death unknown. He left behind his son and daughter and four grandchildren. His son Dustin also appeared in the second season and got into some tight situations. Dustin currently runs his own company, Timberscape Industries, and is still felling trees. A friend posted a tribute about Dwayne stating, he was the carbon copy of what a true logger is and should be. Jess Browning a member of the Browning Logging Crew, appeared in several episodes of Axe Men along with his brother Jay. Jesse and his wife Diet were confronted by a terrible tragedy in 2010 when their four-year-old daughter Ashlyn was mauled to death by one of the family's two Rottweilers. Subsequently, the dog was euthanized. In 2016, word spread that Jesse Browning had died in a car accident in Montana. This was simply a rumor that had started off as an internet hoax and was completely false. The Browning brothers are still hard at work in the forests to this day as can be seen from their Facebook page. On 13th March 2009, just a year after Axed Men launched, S and S Aqua Logging were served a search warrant by the Department of Natural Resources or DNR, Washington State, for not having a permit and so illegally salvaging timber from the Hoquiam River. Jimmy Smith, S&S Aqua Logging's owner, mentioned in the show that the warrant stated that the logs were worth approximately $10,000. The Public Lands Commissioner, Peter Goldmark, claimed the logs were public property and formed a necessary role in the preservation of the ecosystem. The DNR's Fish and Wildlife Habitat Program's director, Greg Hugel, pronounced that permits were granted to remove logs that were obstructing waterways and not usually for timber harvesting. It was also discovered that Jimmy Smith had been milking the system for disability benefits and had cashed in an excess of $50,000 in fraudulent medical benefits. In 2009, Mike Peel had an accident while under the influence of alcohol and rolled his Jeep. His three children were in the car and sustained injuries, but thank goodness none were fatal. He was charged with felony assault. Shelby Swamp Man Stanga, who had appeared in 51 episodes between 2009 and 2016, was arrested in October 2014 for having cut down his neighbor's tree some years prior. On 3rd May 2016, Gabe Rygard posted on their Facebook page, We are sorry to say that Axed Men will not be returning for a 10th season. Thanks for all the support from our fans. The question was, why? Sadly, he never lived to see it revived on 10th July 2019 as Axed Men Reborn, although the 10th season was short-lived and only ran until 12th September. Thereafter, History Channel never commented on why the show was permanently axed. Does anyone ever think about the initial process that Wood goes through to deliver furniture and fittings to create cozy home comforts? This Axe Men series gives people a window into this unknown world and was initially acclaimed for its authentic representation of a logger's life and strife. Yet, at times, it was accused of staging the events and for over-sensationalizing the drama. Their fans contemplated several reasons why the show had got the chop. Its demise could have been as a result of increasingly negative reviews and low ratings due to their audience becoming bored and dwindling. Or was it because of the COVID pandemic that made filming difficult and created all kinds of logistical problems?
Then there were the legal issues and controversies relating to cast members, the environmental impact and the public's distaste of the logging industry. Perhaps the safety concerns associated with accidents and injuries could have led to History Channel incurring legal liabilities. The ultimate crunch was increased production costs and lack of finances for a show that was getting predominantly negative reviews. Let's also consider that possibly the era of reality TV shows portraying tough men in dangerous jobs has simply fizzled out. Either way, whether you miss seeing Axe Men or are an avid fan who would like to watch it again, the good news is that the first six seasons are available on DVD. Or better still, you can grab a couple of cold beers, put your feet up and observe on History.com how these men slogged it out through all 10 seasons of Axe Men. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.